right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're looking at the Animal Biology Kingdom Continued. This is all about the phylum platyhelminthes, which basically means the flatworm. So here's just a couple of different variations of the flatworm, what you're going to be looking at. Um, here we are with uh, Phil the planarian, and then a couple other more uh, brightly covered, colored ones, which are pretty cool looking. So we're going to get off right off the bat. You guys can see how much notes we have here, so you can pause those and get those ones down now, or you can wait till I'm done and then pause it then. Uh, so we're looking at, in terms of symmetry, we have that bilateral symmetry. Uh, these ones are showing cephalization, which means that localized nervous tissue at the head. There's three layers of uh, tissue, mesoectoderm, uh, mesoderm, and the endoderm, which we'll see a visual on in a second. It's got uh, that A column again that we mentioned before. Uh, incomplete digestive system, which means it doesn't have two openings. It doesn't have a mouth, mouth and an anus like a lot of the organisms do. It has that gastrovascular cavity, which is essentially just a storage place kind of similar to our stomach, uh, but it has the anus and the mouth is just out of one opening so that's kind of gross uh, if it was a human hydrostatic hydrostatic skeleton which just means it's basically pressurized by water in order to keep its shape uh, they're free living uh, the ones that use uh, cilia and muscle cells to move about uh, or they're also parasitic they have a flattened body which is basically the defining characteristic of this phylum and they do not have segmentation so there's no individual segments like you'd see in an earthworm. Okay, so you can pause that now and jot those ones down. So here's just a little visual here, what we mean by acolomate. So we have this central uh, gastrovascular cavity here. We have our ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. There's no interstitial space in between. There's no division between this like we'll see in some of these other organisms bilateral symmetry which we already mentioned so here's just a quick little visual uh, we have these things called eye spots which we'll get into before some vi biology terms dorsal would mean back posterior is this back part so you can jot those pictures down if you would like so pause those and jot them down now and then here's just another uh, organism uh, similar to or one of the flatworms and as you can see this one would be a parasitic one because it has hooks in order to dig into its uh, parasitic partner it has suckers in order to take in that uh, in those nutrients neck and these things called uh, proglottids uh, it looks like there's there's different segments but they are not differentiated like they would be in an earthworm so I would draw a little picture basically like that you can do that now so here's a couple little pictures this is Phil the planarian you can see it looks like he has two big eyes but we'll talk about what those are in a second just a couple other flatworms And the Scolex, weird looking guy. Not the friendliest looking guy that you can see. And let's look at some of the free living characteristics. So these are the ones that aren't relying on parasitic material. So the nervous system. Uh, so there's two uh, nerve cords that run down the length of the body, as you guys can see here. Down this way. We have this century, uh, cent uh, central ganglia, which we can basically consider that the brain of the organism right here it responds to light and chemicals through what we call an eye spot so they're not essentially eyes like we see it's just able to perceive any light stimulus and then it's connected to several muscles so it can change its shape and move in response to that nervous stimulus okay pause that and get it down uh, you don't have to worry about the actual uh, visual here you don't have to write down the picture because we'll have something like this in class Reproductive system and free living, uh, they can be hermaphroditic, which means uh, two worms, they both they have both female and reproductive parts, and one organism is going to donate the sperm, and the other one will receive it, and the way that they decide who is going to be the female and the male in this situation is through this process, which we call penis fencing. So what we're looking at here is that they, like we said, they're hermaphroditic, and then when they encounter uh, each other, they have a 60-minute dance in which they repeatedly strike at each other. 
and both of them are trying to inject sperm under the skin of the other. There's a winner and a loser. The winner becomes the male. The loser becomes the female in that that it has to carry those fertilized eggs around. Uh, continuing on with the free living one, it can also produce by uh, asexual reproduction, which is basically fragmentation. Uh, it, pieces of it breaks off and it's able to uh, regenerate into a new species. And the reason why it does that is it has unspecialized uh, simple tissue. Okay, pause that and write that down. Uh, digestive system for those free living ones, we already mentioned it up at the top, but it has a pharynx which brings food into the gastrovascular uh, tav- cavity. It uses enzymes just like we do in order to break down the, uh, the food, and the nutrients are absorbed directly into the cells from the gastro uh, cavity. So there's no need for a circulatory system because we use our circulatory system to transport uh, nutrients to all of our cells, but these ones it can just diffuse which means moving from an area of low concentration to high concentration uh, into surrounding cells. So pause that. Excretory system. Excretory system basically just means getting rid of wastes. In humans, we use our kidneys in order to uh, get rid of our, our, our waste as urine or our large intestine, which we're going to be using to get it rid of it into our, uh, our solid food. But for these ones, they bring in their food and expel undigested matter right back through the mouth again. And then excess water is eliminated through a network of tubes and specialized cells called flame cells. And it propels waste into and out of the body through these pores, through those pores. Some specialization, now we're on to the parasitic. They have special hooks which are able to latch onto the intestines of the hosts. Uh, it doesn't have the sensory organs like the free living ones do because it doesn't need to sense its surrounding considering it's just in the same spot and it doesn't care where it's latching on, it's just going to eat that intestine. Uh, there's no digestive system, it simply absorbs food that we've already digested uh, into its food. So it's highly efficient in its reproductive system. Hundreds of those proglottids that we saw before are filled with eggs and sperm. They fertilize the eggs, uh, the fertilized eggs mature and are released when the proglottid is excreted with the feces of the host and the eggs ingested by another host, like we mentioned before, and then that meat can be consumed uh, by our, us uh, and the life cycle will continue again. And so here's an example of our asexual reproduction. Uh, we start off by having these worms, these adult tapeworms, uh, in our system. Those eggs somehow get into our livestock uh, through any sort of ingestion. The pig, in the pig, it is able to infect the muscle cells where the organism is able to regenerate. It starts growing. It has larvae, and that larvae, which is still in the pig, if the food that we eat is undercooked, the cysts, per, uh, the cysts survive. Okay, so cyst is just pretty much a... Um, variation of these organisms and then when it gets into our system goes through our system and it begins to reproduce and as you can see these big long tapeworms which you don't want will continue their cycle and go back into those pigs again okay so it uses two different hosts in order to reproduce okay so pause that and get that one down if you have any questions uh, we'll be going over this in a lot of detail in class have a wonderful night